Hello my dear friends, my name is Paul Oscar Mike Zero Echo Tango and welcome to my YouTube channel. Here you can see my Hexpeam Mantena. antenna. This is an actually this is actually a center hub of my Hexpeam antenna which I'm refurbishing in these days because I plan to put my Hexpeam antenna on top of my new tower in a, in a backyard. And I had to make a new RF choke because this original RF choke has been in a very poor shape. So the, the new uh, RF current choke actually you can see here on top of my of this hub and in this video I would like to show you process the whole process how I made this RF choke. So I really hope that you will enjoy this video and uh, and I, I really hope that this RF joke will actually work. So I hope that you will enjoy and let's get started. All right, so the collected parts I have here on this desk. So this is the box the box for the for this uh, toroid core which is made of 43 material a good for the uh, AJ frequencies up to 30 megahertz and it's uh, quite good for this box you can see that it's fitting perfectly inside this box also I have this uh, cover for it and there is the space for a ceiling right as you can see here so this box should be a water waterproof of course I have a ceiling also which is made of kind of rubber or foam let's say there I have this uh, SO239 connector which is you can see golden plated inside which is good the RG58 coaxial cable this is actually a soft uh, softer uh, version of this uh, RG58 and here is attached the uh, PL259 uh, connector uh, I put some ceiling inside as well as you can see there is the silicone inside to prevent that no any water will come inside this uh, coaxial cable and connector. The length of this coaxial cable is uh, is something around one meter plus minus. Some screws over here that's the um, soldering eye for a connection to the uh, shield of the coaxial cable which I am planning to use right after after this uh, socket okay and uh, this little thing I have no idea how it says pronounce in uh, English but I'm sure that you know for what purpose is this thing so it is also for waterproofing as you can see there is there is the hole which will be bigger and this thing will prevent to get water inside the box so All the parts are collected right here and I'm going to work and to make this thing. So wish me luck.
And now I will show you how to make the holes for the SO239 connector. Nice and precise. So I hold this uh, socket to the box with this thing. Let's say how it word how it says in English. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of holder. Let's say. And by an eye, you can go right to the middle with the needle. Okay, have here. Second hole here. And uh, here. Sorry for the camera not focusing. See? Oh, that's right in the middle. And also here. Uh, camera don't know where have to focus. And here. All right, so let's check if the holes are right in the middle. Yes, they are. So you can see four dots right here. And now we need to drill this holes. I'm using, I think it is one millimeter wide. good perfect but one hole have to be a bigger because I am using this machine screw which has a different thread and diameter so I think uh, this one will be fine and it is a three millimeter drill for this screw. All right, so need to check. Perfect. And for this little holes, I'm using these screws for wood or the plastic as well. And here to the top, we have to use a 12 millimeter wide hole on top. I see that. 12 millimeter is right here. So that's the diameter. So twice measure and ounce drill. 
that's how we say yeah we need one more that it's still small all right so that should be enough definitely I have to I have to use a silicone to seal this connector, let's say, because the the hole is bit bigger, and the SO two three nine. You can see that the hole is perfectly in line with this connector. That's a good sign. All right, so before I will install this thing, I need um, to clean uh, to clean uh, this uh, plastic around and and then I want use a silicone as a ceiling. All right, also the connector or the socket. All right, so I think it's too much silicone. really it is okay Yeah, perfect. Now I have to clean that around. And because I need a good connection between the body of this socket, I have to clean this screw, which is used for a for an unsoldering eye. And I need to clean it properly. to be sure that there is no any silicone in path also now I need to clean this 
screw as well. Okay, perfect. Soldering eye and this little nut. Perfect. Oh boy enough okay so the connector part is finished socket is sealed and that's the that's the point where will be connected the coaxial cable for the choke bubble And now this little plastic transition, I think that it should be a right word <laughs> for it, I don't know. So, some ceiling here. Okay. Oh, I forgot to clean this plastic around. Alright, this dots is just the plastic defects. That's the reason why I'm not using this box for any other purposes. So there we are maybe i should use ceiling also here actually it is a it is an upper part of the box so the rain and the other stuff will be right here <sighs> fine good Well, so it is sealed 100%. <laughs> All right, so inside this uh, transition, there is a rubber right here in the middle. Let me show you. Yeah, you can see that inside there is a rubber. And oh, right, everything is wet here on top. I use this nut and this nut will push this thing on the rubber and it will make this old transition waterproof. That's the hole for a 
cable and this is an output for uh, cable to antenna this will be connection to my feed line all right so now I need to make this dry all right so the box uh, and this transition and the socket is right on the place everything is prepared actually for my toroid but but there is a one very important thing that I have to find how this uh, balloon I will uh, fix on a rod which is on my hex beam okay so it's not a cell standing thing so I need to fix it somehow and I found a system let's imagine that this is the rod on my hex beam hub which is the center part of the hex beam antenna and how I can fix this box on it so I found something that's the uh, chocolate sockets and if you remove this interior out from uh, from there uh, you can uh, remove the, all of them or any of them uh, you can uh, remove this um, this higher points <laughs> of of this uh, sockets and take only this part of this chocolate all right and here you can see the holes so you can just or I will I'm going to fix from inside two screws right here inside a box through these holes in the middle okay so let's say here two holes and then I will use the band well something I mean something like this but much much bigger okay I do not have a bigger one right now but something like this but bigger I don't know what is the correct word for it and this way I will fix this box to the rod around okay yeah that is good so I have to remove these screws from inside and uh, these things inside then I have to cut out these parts on it and then I will use maybe four of them let's say mm, one two three four five no here so four holes first one and this end one final one I will use for my screws right here and right here all right so the last three ones uh, good okay and uh, this um, you see that these peaks I have to uh, I have to brush oh, see that small injury So here you can see a thinner and thicker part. So I need 
to have the thicker part out, out of this box because here I will fix it to the rod so I prefer to have this thicker part outside to be a stronger okay so I have to center this holder right in the middle and to be perfectly in line and mark mark the holes okay so let's drill One is good, second one is almost good. Oh, or no? Yeah, yeah, it is good. All right, so I choose these screws to hold this holder or to fix this holder on the box. And I need to make these holes a bit bigger. Therefore, I use the number five drill okay it's still small but I can make this hole a bit bigger I think now it's gonna be yeah, much better. And definitely it needs it needs a ceiling as well. A lot of ceiling. <laughs> that way so go away water Yeah, that should be enough. <laughs> Great. Now I need to find find a hole on it. Okay, I see it. Okay. Wow, that's really strong. Good. All right, it's still here. You can still see here a silicone, which is good.
now you can see that how the fixation will look like will look like here on this balloon okay so uh, now it's time for the toroid windings and to make a uh, balloon so the winding plan is similar to 49 to 1 transformer which means that if you imagine that this wire is actually a coaxial cable which is this one the wiring diagram will be the same okay so i will start somewhere from down here i will connect my uh, SO239 connector which is down there so it will start somewhere from here and I will make uh, maybe seven windings of coaxial cable and as is shown on this picture I will align this coaxial turn to the opposite side of the toroid and then I will winding this toroid for another maybe seven turns up and then through the hole of this transition up to the antenna so the first very important thing is to line this uh, coaxial cable to through this uh, transition and then we have to winding the toroid the reason why why first is good to have this coaxial inside the transition is that here on top, I have prepared already the PL259. So I have to leave a few centimeter long connection, secure this transition, and then we'll winding this toroid. So let's get started. So that is the space for the end. Uh, so that's the first turn around the around the storage all right so be careful did you not overturn the coaxial cable do not bend it or something not much not too much you could damage your coaxial cable inside so I will count count maybe seven turns and here I would like to secure this first turn right now with this type and this first turn will not moving on the trail rate Good. All right, so be sure that that a coaxial cable each turn is tightly is tightly winded to the toroid. Uh, surface 
to have a good RF connection actually with this uh, toroid yeah you have to be prepared that it is a hard work actually for my fingers because of the, of the thickness of this coaxial cable therefore I recommend to use a softer version of this coaxial cable all right so the coaxial is going through the hole which means that is the that is a first turn so I have a one two three four five six and it's going be going to be a seven So now it's the seven turns. The eight turn will line through the hole to the opposite side, and I will start right behind the first turn and coming up. actually use as many windings you can more windings a better efficiency of your balloon Great, so I have to secure the, the last turn with the tape uh, as well. But it is not much space for it. Therefore I'm using this small tapes be sure that it is fixed good enough oh no good so There we have a choke balloon actually made of the coaxial cable winded on the toroid core which is made of a 30, 43 material. Yeah, looks pretty good and I have to put this uh, toroid inside a box carefully and connect this end to my SO239 connector right here. So very hardly I fitted this whole core into this box but you can see that it is in. That's good and I uh, tied it this uh, opening right there you can see that the rubber is pushing on the cable which makes all this system waterproof so the last thing is to connect the end of the coaxial cable to the center pin and to this uh, shielded pin
Well, so all the terminals are connected to to the coaxial cable and now I have to put a lot of really a lot of silicone here to this area to seal all this all these parts inside because this is the bottom of or the lower part of the balloon and I presume that the humidity or the water will stand here and also I have to drill a two tiny holes to the sides uh, as a ventilation All right, so here will be one, let's say here, and, uh, and uh, here. Okay. The ventilation is important to have if you use any equipment or boxes outside, outdoors. All right, so it's a very small holes. I presume that about one millimeter only, and. The pressure, the pressure and the humidity will escape through these holes. Right now, let me put some silicone to the bottom of the box. A lot of silicone we need. Okay. Okay. Just uh, to be sure, I put some silicone also here. And also here, don't worry to have a lot of silicone inside. Still better than nothing. All right. Everything is sealed. Now I need to close the doors. But before before I have to put inside the seal. So here you can see this sealing. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of uh, foam or or something. It's not a classic silicone. Okay, so now the cover, the cover is sealed, fully sealed against the water. All right. Uh, 
ta-da! <laughs> All right, so balloon is finished. Now I have to, I have to measure connectivity, uh, the center pin to center pin, and the outer shield to the outer shield. So just uh, to be sure that there is no short between uh, the shield and the center pin, we have to check. Connectivity. Wait, I'm touching this thing. So there is no any connectivity between them. So that's good sign. Center pin to center pin. Yeah, that is good. And the shield to the shield. Perfect. So now I have to say that this uh, balloon or the current choke actually has been finished and I have to take some time to, to try this uh, glue inside and maybe tomorrow I will put this thing on my antenna. So let's hope that it will work. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my videos. And looking forward to see you again next time. 73. Bye-bye.